Hello friends and family of YouTube. Dave from Dave and Pretty here. If you own a single axle RV or if you're thinking about buying one, I have got some very important information for you. I don't care if you are a seasoned pro and you've been pulling one of these things for 20 years. I have still got some information that's probably going to surprise you. And uh, so first off, what we're going to have to do is kind of get everybody up to speed. So I'd like to give some information for the beginners so that they're all up to the same level as the, the seasoned pros. So y'all hang tight. I've got some information that's going to shock you. Not just one, two, three things, but several things that's going to surprise you about having a single axle RV. Okay, one of the first things I want to start with for you here, folks, is I want to show you how this RV, the dry weight, is right at we'll call 2,600 pounds. Now, the other thing I want to show you is the GVWR, which is the gross weight, as in the most weight this thing can possibly weigh is 3200 nearly 3300 so let's call this 3300 and let's call the dry weight 2600 that'll help us for easy math purposes 2600 and 3300 okay what you're looking at here this is the axle that i just pulled off of this rv if you look right here it says capacity 3000 pounds Okay, remember I was saying that the trailer empty weighed 2,600 pounds. A full tank of fresh water weighs 275 pounds. The gas, the propane bottle, just a standard, just like you use on a barbecue grill, fully weighs 40 pounds. Your battery weighs 70 pounds. That comes to a grand total of 29.85. But look at here, the axle is only rated for 3,000. So this is no, no generator, no clothes, nothing. Already within 15 pounds of meeting the, the weight of the axle's maximum load. But according to the sticker on the side of the RV, it says it can handle 3,300 pounds. But the axle's only rated for three. So I was like, what is this all about? So I made some phone calls, and what it came to is I was told from the manufacturer that 300 pounds goes to the tongue weight. So 300 pounds is going to be balanced onto my pulling vehicle. And I know a lot of you, that's not uh, rocket science, but what I'm about to tell you is a little bit, of, uh, a little bit more surprising than the information I just gave. Okay, so as I was saying, 300 pounds comes off of your maximum weight. 300 pounds is actually on the axle. I got some cracker boxes that I'm using here for illustration and it'll help make more sense. So when you actually hook your RV to your vehicle, they'll kind of go into a V-shaped pattern like this, okay? And that 300 pounds comes off of here onto your vehicle. Now, that's okay as long as you leave it alone. But if you put a weight distribution kit on here, that levels out the RV and the van, vehicle, truck, car, whatever you're using. If this vehicle, well, let me back up. If, if you're using a weight distribution kit, and I got this information that I am sharing with you. I got this directly from Reese. This is not an opinion of mine. This is from Reese, Reese Hitch. When I talked to them, the engineers told me, because I said, well, where does this weight go? It doesn't just magically disappear when you use a weight distribution hitch. The guy told me, he said, what it does is it distributes the weight evenly which adds more weight here and adds more weight here it takes away 
a lot of the weight that is here because when you use a weight distribution system before that everything all your weight is kind of going down into this rear tire of your pull vehicle but using the weight distribution that levels it out so again you have weight now being pressed here and here it distributes if this van is full of junk which that's what my case is I sell at flea markets I fill this van completely full with junk when I use that weight distribution hitch some of that weight is transferred also to here keep in mind this axle can only hold 3,000 pounds but the tongue weight is 300 pounds I removed that tongue weight once I hooked this up and I also started distributing weight back to here truth be known I was probably putting 4,000 pounds or even more back here because of the the fact that I was distributing my weight now if this was a lightweight car if this was a lightweight truck lightweight SUV that weight distribution hitch would not be a factor but since this van is loaded with lots of heavy weight and I'm distributing weight I'm distributing it all the way across therefore this this axle is way overloaded so I asked the guy from Reese I said with this theory in mind should I ever be using this weight distribution hitch and he said no if this vehicle is which in my case this vehicle when it's loaded is nearly three times the weight of this uh, RV I should never use a weight distribution hitch if this was an empty van if it was a uh, completely empty in a lightweight van yes but being that my van is heavy and you might run into the same thing folks if you've got a, a f-250 and let's say you're going to put all your camping gear in here your kayaks um, you could have generators closed for two or three weeks you got all this stuff and let's say that you added solar panels on the top let's say that you added a second battery yes your weight as far as this chart goes your weight may be fine but when you throw that weight distribution hitch on there if you only have one axle you might you might have immediately went overload from the second you hook that up so what I did is I, I bought a 3500 pound axle and that's what I will be using and I will no longer be using the weight distribution hitch system so that's going to be uh, what's what's changing in mind so I highly recommend folks that if you are looking at buying a single axle RV one of the things you need to do is you need to look at the rating on the axle look at the rating there will be a sticker right in here it's a yellow sticker generally and it will give you your weight ratings so you need to keep all that in mind but uh, I'm also going to show you the tires and that was kind of a giveaway for uh, for us to know that our axle was bad okay these are the tires uh, these two just came off of the axle and you can see that this one has never even been used still has the hair on it so um, these tires have 2,000 miles or less on them if you look you can see that this you can see the crest of the tire you can see that the tread is equal all the way across basically just a little bit of a of a roundness to the top now when you get over here and you look at these tires again these have less than 2,000 miles on them you can see that they have serious wear on this inside if you were to look at the RV as it was going down the road these wheels were bowed out kind of like this on the on each side to where the top was pointing inward and the bottom was pointing outward kind of like the letter a if you were to look at it from that point so always get out when you do a walk around your rv before you leave anywhere get back about 30 40 foot 
squat down and look at your tires and look and see how how your axle looks does your tires look straight up and down or do they look like they're going kind of at an angle like this so you want them to be straight up and down not at an angle that's what wore these out so there's the 3,000 pound axle I now have a 3,500 pound axle under this RV and uh, if you want to watch the video that I have of that I will be putting it on uh, YouTube as well and uh, that should help you out if you need to replace your axle well as you can tell I finished up getting the axle and the wheels and everything on uh, on this RV so hopefully I won't ever have to do that again I think I just about rather have a root canal so uh, anyway if you're like me when I went and bought this thing brand new nobody mentioned a lot of the information that I just gave you today I don't even think I've seen any of this information on some of the forums that I've joined over the years I know for a fact when I bought my waste weight distribution hitch nobody told me about any of that back then either uh, at the time I was using a smaller vehicle, but nobody asked what kind of vehicle I was using. Nobody even told me there was anything to do with uh, whether it was really putting more weight onto the axle. A lot of information these uh, RV companies don't share with us. A lot of things the dealers don't tell you either, or the salesman. That's why I'm here. I'm trying to help y'all out, and I, I appreciate everybody else doing the same thing. That's the great thing about YouTube. We can share information with each other and keep each other from having the same problem that I went through, spending the money, spending two days working with this stupid thing. So uh, if you want to see a good blooper, hang around. I've got a, a good blooper I'm doing as the closing of this video. Appreciate y'all watching. Thanks uh, for uh, giving us some thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. We don't do Patreon. That's all we ask for is give us just a little bit of thumbs up. So uh, check out this blooper I got for you. Hello friends and family of YouTube. It's Dave from Dave and Purdy here. If you own an, an RV that has a single axle... Or if you're planning on buying one, I have a lot of vital information I'm going to be sharing with you. I've got a fly around my damn head. Look at that. Look at that. It's wearing me out.